Uh, that was a great way to get started this morning with a good laugh. <laughs> good to have you here. This is actually a good staff meeting crowd this morning to get started with, especially for opening weekend of deer season. And uh, I do know there's going to be a lot of people out this morning. I know there's people out there doing vacation and they're hunting. I know there's, uh, and we've even got some out sick. But I do know this, something the Lord uh, reminded me of last night that I mentioned. We sometimes forget how to have church small. And when I talk about having church small, I'm not talking about diminished in glory or quantity. What I'm for, to, reminding you is, remember, um, we don't have to have 500 people in the building to absolutely have a move of the glory of God. And as a matter of fact, when we forget about how to have a move, move of the glory, just me and him, then it actually diminishes the overall glory of the services. So this morning, just be prepared to have church small. You and Jesus. I'll have church me and Jesus. I don't have church him and Jesus. And if you do that, you put a whole bunch of little flames together and you get a great big flame. Amen. So just be prepared and ready for that this morning. Uh, the atmosphere of the church is our pep meeting topic this morning. And I want to remind you that anything removed from its atmosphere of life will not survive. You take something out of its atmosphere of life, it cannot live. If you take a fish out of water and you lay it on dry ground, it just left its atmosphere of life. It'll lay right there and die because it's outside of its atmosphere of life. If you take a beautiful little kitten and you put it in the deep, deep ocean, guess what? That little kitten's not going to last very long because it's outside of its atmosphere of life. And I want to remind you that in the spirit realm, it's the same exact way. There's an atmosphere of life and there's an atmosphere of death. There's an atmosphere that we are called to move into and an atmosphere that we were never called to be a part of. And this morning, I want us to have the atmosphere of life right here at Bell's Chapel Assembly of God. With everything that's within us, we want to love at first, love in the end, love in the beginning, love in the middle, love in the end. If we do that, everything else will take care of itself. We're going to worship Abba. We're going to seek His face. We're going to give Him the freedom and the opportunity to move in this room. We're not going to follow a program. We're not going to follow any kind of production. We're just here this morning to have the atmosphere of the glory of the living King. With Him having His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the atmosphere of life for the church. And that's what we're going to do this morning. If 500 people pack in this building, and I pray they do, we're going to have church. If more about... 20 more show up, and it's a small crowd this morning, you know what? That's okay, too. We're going to have the atmosphere of life, and we're going to have church with whoever's here. We're going to absolutely let the glory of the Lord fall, and we're going to move in the atmosphere of life. And for my staff this morning, my heroes of faith and my soldiers well armed, but I love to talk to you about being the tip of the spear all the time. The Lord gave me a word for you today. It's out of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. You've heard this a jillion times in your Christian walk, especially as staff. And so he answered and said unto me, This is the word of the Lord that's observable. Not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. And I know we look in the mirror sometimes and we see all of our failures and we see all of the strength of our flesh. We see all of our weaknesses. We see our scabs, our scrapes, our bumps, our falls. We see all of that. But I want to remind you, the angel here said to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And I want to remind you this morning that the same exact spirit that settled on Jesus as a dove in the Jordan River was also the exact same spirit that settled on the men in the upper room as a consuming fire. I want to remind you that the same spirit that set upon David as he was in front of Goliath before he ever threw that stone that gave him the strength to say, you uncircumcised Philistine, this day I'll take your head from your neck. I want you to know that same spirit that gave David the strength to fulfill that is the same Holy Ghost that's inside of you. There was a spirit of the living God that came upon a man named Samson. And I know he had the long hair, but... So does a lot of people and they don't have the power of God. Had absolutely nothing to do with his hair. It had everything to do with the Spirit of God upon him. And he bent over and picked up a jawbone in a day of battle. And the scripture says he destroyed the Philistines hip and thigh, hip and thigh. And the same Spirit that came upon Samson that day rests upon each and every single one of you. I could go on and on. It was the Spirit of the living God that came upon Samuel that gave him the voice to speak into the heart of a king. It was the Spirit of God that came upon Elijah that gave him the 
strength to call fire down from heaven. And not only that, but to destroy all the prophets of Baal. When I look out at you, I don't see your weaknesses, nor your flesh, nor your, any problem within you. What I see is the power of a consuming God on you. I see the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit that comes down from Him. When Jesus said, I will send you another comforter, He actually said, and you will receive power from upon high. So this morning, you are not weak and you are not frail. You are mighty in the hands of the living God. You don't have a spirit of weakness upon you, nor a spirit of fear, but a peace and a love of a sound mind. You are filled with the power of the living God upon you. You are the tip of the spear. You are the heroes of faith for this generation. You carry in you the same power of the Holy Ghost that resurrected Jesus out of a tomb, raised Him from death to life. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's what's on you this morning. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. There's a world to save and you're the tip of the spear for this battle. Get ready. He's got something for you today. So let's get in a circle. Let's get ready for church. Father, I